Morning everyone. Sorry about the late lessons today. I've been super busy in school, which you'll have a text about soon. I've been making a video so you can see exactly what school looks like around school and also in the classrooms. Um, so that's why I'm a bit late with the lessons today. So I thought because it's out, ho hopefully, our last virtual lesson, um, I'm going to finish the story of Patan's pumpkin to you today. With you today, sorry. So we're going to start from the beginning so we can get to know the story really well. I'll show you the illustrations and I'll read the words. Once upon a time there was a man called Patan. He lived with his wife Canny on the banks of a mighty river that galloped down the Sahadri Mountains. They tended the goats, fed the bulls and rode with the elephants that roamed their lands. Patan grew pepper, rice, nutmeg and bananas. He shared his food with everyone, the animals, the birds and the insects. One day Patan found an ailing plant in the valley. It had beautiful yellow flowers. I'll plant it by my hut and look after it, he thought. The plant liked its new home. Its yellow flowers smiled at the sun. Look, Patan called one day, a pumpkin has started to grow. The pumpkin grew a little every day. The goat can't reach it now, said Canny. The pumpkin had grown taller than the fence. It was fatter than the pigs. It grew some more. Patan had to climb on the elephants to check the pumpkin and still it grew bigger and bigger and bigger. Soon it will be as tall as the mountain, said Patan. The next day, dark clouds gathered. Rain crashed against the rocks in fury. Patan was afraid that the floods would wash away his hut. We should leave the mountains tomorrow, he said. We should take all the animals, birds, beetles and bugs with us and a sapling of every plant and seeds of every grain. But how were they going to take all the creatures with them? Patan couldn't sleep that night. When the pumpkin glowed like fire under a burst of lightning, he had an idea. In the morning, Patan reached for his axe. It's time to harvest the pumpkin, he said. Battling the lashing rain, Patan climbed the mountain. The birds and animals followed him. Patan climbed, oh, sorry, Patan jumped on top of the pumpkin. Cutting a big hole, he dived into its orange flesh. The birds called out in fear. The goat bleated, the bison snorted. Patan dug into the pumpkin, hollowing its insides. Help me, he called. The goats, the bison and the birds ferried out the pumpkin flesh as fast as they could. The wind blew hard, just like it is here. Woo. The wind blew hard, rocking the pumpkin from side to side, but Patan did not give up. He dug and dug until the pumpkin was hollow. At last it was big enough for everyone. Down in the valley, Canny filled sacks with grain, seeds and herbs. Patan loaded them onto the goats, elephants and bulls and brought them up to the mountainside. Hurry, climb in, Patan cried. The dark evening skies cradled, cradled the mountain in darkness. We must leave before nightfall, said Patan, cutting the prickly stem from the plant. Now the pumpkin was free. It rolled, excuse me, it rolled down the mountain and bounced into the river. The crested waters of the river carried the pumpkin along. Many a day and night must have passed. No one counted. It rained and rained and rained. Canny sang a lullaby to soothe the baby animals and birds. While the gods of rain and thunder sent us, and thunder send us a storm, here inside the pumpkin we are safe and warm. One day we will return to our mountain peak, but in this great darkness light is what we seek. And then one day the pumpkin bumped against something and stopped. Patan climbed out into a bright and sunny day. We've reached the plains, he called joyfully. Canny and all the creatures hurried out. The troubles of the rain were finally over. The pumpkin has saved us, said Canny, and the animals and birds basked in the sunshine. The next morning, Patan gathered everyone together. It's time to return home, he said. Back in the valley, they built a new house by the river. I'm forever grateful to the pumpkin, Patan said, as he planted the single pumpkin seed he had saved. So he's planted the single pumpkin seed there, look. Patan and Canny had many children and they all made their homes in the foothills of the Sahadri Mountains. Can you see all their homes look? In beautiful Sahadri Mountains. Even today, Patan's descendants live in this valley, looking after their animals and growing pumpkins. They remember Patan and Canny with reverence and love. So you know we've been learning about the Arula tribe because the Arula tribe wrote this story um, 
as a way of remembering their ancestors now it's a myth so it's not completely true the whole thing but it may have been true about patan and canny just maybe not about the pumpkin okay so have a look at your tasks underneath to find out what you need to do for your english lesson today and hopefully i get to see you soon